guys, welcome to today's video. I'm Sarah, this is Nobius Beauty. So I'm putting on my chemistry hat for the day. I was asked by Brittany Miller, 7830, um, can you do a simple for dummies pH and skincare video? I read, I read and read and got more and more confused. Not looking for the SA, I think salicylic acid, so that's good. I've got rosacea, no acne, itching redness. Um, and then they said, I'd love a pH for dummies and how I can apply this in my skincare routine. So I'm gonna discuss pH and I've got some test strips I will link to and I also discussed pH a little bit in uh, last week's newsletter video. So you can always check that out. So these are two types of pH strips. Um, my favorite ends up being these ones. They're just easier to decipher whereas the colors on this brand are just a little bit closer. So I'm gonna use these in this video for testing some various products. So. pH, it's in skincare, uh, products require a proper pH to be effective, and it refers to the potential of hydrogen, which measures how acidic or alkaline a product or substance is on a scale of 0 to 14. So you see in the front of these, it goes from 0 to 7, and then on the back, it goes from 7 to 14. So, uh, yeah, so the lower the number, the more acidic it is. The middle number seven is neutral and then eight to 14 is very alkaline or basic. So using products with a balanced proper pH are gonna protect your skin from degrading, uh, degrading the barrier, keeping your skin barrier is gonna be essential. Uh, it's very important in keeping your skin hydrated, healthy, preventing breakouts and allowing bacteria and pathogens in, reduces the likelihood of irritation and sensitivity and keeps helps your skin hold on to moisture better so we always want to have our skin barrier intact if you've seen some of my videos i'll do um videos to help uh heal your skin barrier you know like if you have damaged it from using too many different products or different actives uh things how to help heal it and calm it down so most skincare products are properly ph balanced which is good uh, generally, you want to find most skincare products, you'll find them around between five and six. Um, this is typically where you want them. Most topical products that are not actives should be formulated a pH of 5.4 to 5.9. And this is because research shows the average person's skin pH, each of us have our own pH and microbiome on our skin. Um, so that's typically around 4.7. And in general, men's skin tends to be a touch more acidic than women's skin. So kind of interesting there. Um, so yeah, so disturbing the pH of the skin can cause many issues um, that come from damaging the skin barrier and the acid mantle. The acid mantle is the kind of the protective film that covers your skin, kind of like when you get uh, a new TV and you have that thing to peel off, you know, on the plastic, I love peeling that off. Kind of every, everybody has their own kind of protective film to keep harmful bacteria and things out and to keep water and moisture in. So when your skin's uh, damaged, when you've damaged the skin barrier, it leads to a lot of different issues. Redness is a huge one, flaking and scaling, tingling, stinging sensation when you apply almost anything, sometimes even water when it's really damaged, acne, possible infection and increased transepidermal water loss leading to more dehydrated skin. So we want to keep that skin barrier as intact as we possibly can and uh, keep bacteria out and keep water and hydration in. So when it comes to certain active ingredients, pH is very important to focus on. So I'm gonna go through some actives and then some different products. So, um, so things like bar soaps tend to be very acidic, a pH of nine for the average bar soap which is why if you notice, if you use a bar soap, your skin gets scaly, dry feeling. Um, you might have uh, flakes that peel off. So it can cause severe dryness and damage, damage to your skin. So bar soap, I typically don't recommend. Although there are some brands that have made some bar soaps that are friendly for your skin. Uh, Drunk Elephant has a couple of them, you know, so, and they're becoming more popular because there's no packaging. So they're environmentally friendly. So those type of bar soaps, I'm not talking about, but I'm talking about like ivory soap or pure natural soap or dial bar soap, things like that. So, okay, so certain actives that require proper pH to be effective. Uh, ascorbic acid is one of them. So I'm gonna measure a couple of ascorbic acid products and uh, we'll see what the average pH for them is. So I've got my personal favorite, which is the Geek and Gorgeous Sea Glow. 
right here. I'm going to put some drops of this on here and then we'll get the pH. So for ascorbic acid, we want it typically to be a pH of 2.6 to 3.2. Um, typically under 3.5 is acceptable, uh, but if it's in that sweet spot there, that's where you want it. Okay, so I just applied the serum to the test strip and we will check it out. Okay, it's focusing on me. Here we go. Okay, so looking at this, the pH of this looks to be, I would say, I would say almost right about three. So you can kind of see that. Or check out my review of the product too, if you want to see more in details. So this is a proper pH. You want it between 2.6 and 3.2, and it's right in there. So, and it's not super low. Some vitamin C serums are really, really low. And then it leads to the way of potential irritation because once you get too low, your skin just doesn't tolerate it as well. So I also have the Dime Hyperglow Vitamin C Serum. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'll grab a pH strip here. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little bit of drops on there. Okay, this one is looking very similar to the Geek and Gorgeous, which is a good thing. So there we go. You can kind of see it. Okay, so looking at this, I would say the pH of this one, to me, it looks to be maybe like 2.5. It's uh, maybe 2.6, 2.5. So it's in there, but it is uh, a little bit lower than the Geek and Gorgeous. They look pretty similar, but the Dime Beauty is a little bit more acidic. Just a little bit, not too much. So keep that one in mind. Okay, so glycolic acid, typically best of pH between 3 and 4. I've got the Kinship Self Smooth 10% Glycolic Resurfacing Serum. And I'm going to put a little bit of that on a pH strip here. And we'll see where this one goes. Okay, this is kind of a messy bottle, so. Okay, so here we go. I would say this fits right between three and four, which is good. I would say it's probably probably pretty close to four. I'd say a little bit, I'd say probably 3.8, 3.9. So that is good. And it's still going to be kind of gentle. Um, okay, next up, I've got lactic acid, which is also best between three and four. So let's do a little test of this one. And I will say, this is why the Sunday Riley Good Jeans lactic acid serum is so... I don't love it because the pH of it is very low for, for what it needs to be to be effective. It's very low. So, okay, so here we go. So this is the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Resurfacing Peptide Serum with 10% lactic acid. And here's the pH of it. This pH is a little bit on the higher side, what I would think. Do they mention it on here what the pH is, what they claim it is? I don't see that they do, but um, anyway, it looks to be, I would say probably four, almost four right on. So uh, that's well within the means. So it's going to be a little bit more gentle than something that's a little bit lower. Okay, uh, mandelic acid, another one between three and four. I'll do a one more test strip for this one. And then I've got a few other things to test. Okay. Oops, that one's going to leave a mess. Okay. And then I'll test a cleanser so you can kind of see what a cleanser looks like when, when you test the pH and how to test it. So this one also looks to be right, right under four, right around four. So it's going to be within that, probably barely, but right about four. Okay. So one product they don't talk a lot about with pH is salicylic acid. BHA. Personally, I have found most salicylic acid products that are effective for me are under a pH of four, but some people dispute that it actually needs to be in that range. I have found for myself, it's most efficient for me when it's under a four. So I will test this one. This is the Paul's Choice BHA Pore Refining Treatment. So I've got another test strip. And here we go. Oops, I'm making a mess again. 
Okay, so the pH of this one is definitely higher. Looks like it's probably about right about a four. So that's probably going to be okay, at least for me. It's I found it effective, but not much higher than that. So, okay, so hang on one second. Okay, so I had to split this into two videos. I apologize. Okay, so I did salicylic acid. So we've got kind of the pH of actives that are really dependent upon the pH. So uh, I also have certain products that require general pH. So cleansers, we want them typically between 4.5 and 7 pH. So uh, you can't just squirt the cleansing gel onto a pH test strip. It doesn't work that way. You want to use it how it's going to be applied on your skin. So I'm going to create a little bit of a lather and then I'll pH test it that way. So Hang on one second, I've got a strip handy. So the strip is dry, I'm gonna create a little bit of a lather like I would typically apply it on my skin and then test the pH that way. A little bit more, I think I... Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the strip. I wanna make sure I don't touch with my wet hands. Okay, so here we go. pH of this one looks like it's right between 5 and 6. I would say 5.5, which is where we would want to see it. So they did a good job with that. I think they mentioned the low pH gentle cleanser. So that one's from Geek and Gorgeous. Now I'm going to rinse the rest of my hands off. Okay. There we go, okay, sorry. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so we did the cleanser right in there, right where we want it. Toners typically between five and seven again. Here's a nice toner that I really like, the Neogen uh, Real Ferment Micro Essence. So I'll do a little pH test on that one here. And this one. I would say it's probably five exactly. So, uh, and that is probably right where we want it. So five exactly, no issues with that. And I do think uh, the older product gets, especially actives can certainly affect the pH of it. So if it's been sitting around for a long time, the pH is probably not gonna be as correct as it would if it was a brand new, newly formulated product. Uh, sunscreens between five and seven and a half. Moisturizers between five and seven so here's a moisturizer the drunk elephant proteiny and you can't take a ph of something that isn't water based so if you have like an oil like um this is just a tam new oil you couldn't test the ph of this because there's no water there's no ph oxygen you know to hydrogen to test so okay so here is the proteiny da, 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 da. so Here we go with that. I would say the pH of this is probably 5.5, right about there. And then uh, face serums, typically between four to six, and retinol products between four and 6.6. .6. So um, yeah, so the, the real kicker is this, that some types, skin types can be sensitive to products with a pH that is too low, as well as too high. But typically I find this a lot with um, people that are testing out ascorbic acid serums they will find that it leaves their skin far too dry uh, or irritated feeling. Uh, some people just cannot tolerate uh, large amounts of ascorbic acid on a regular basis because of that low pH. Um, there are currently many ascorbic acid derivatives that do not require a low pH to be effective, theoretically, theoretically, because they still haven't been fully vetted and tested and studied, but it's a way to keep vitamin C in your routine uh, without having to uh, use ascorbic acid. So something like this, uh, the Glow Recipe Guava Vitamin C Dark Spot Serum. I'll test the pH of this. Let's see. And this uses derivatives, so the pH won't be similar to like an ascorbic acid would. So this one, yeah. So this one looks like it's probably right around, right, right under five, I would say. And I think this one uses a couple different forms of vitamin C in it as well. So 
So it's kind of uh, different for ev everybody. People tolerate certain things much easier. Some people can use strong peels, like the one from The Ordinary, regularly. And some people like me can't have it on their skin for more than two seconds without starting to uh, freak out and get irritated. So, yeah. So over the years, I've tested out dozens of different pH test strips. I found these ones from Mashery Nagel to be the best. They are the easiest to read. They're, they last, I mean, you got a hundred in a box, so one like this lasts me a few months with my videos. So they're the easiest to read, the colors are easy to decipher, and they're beneficial when testing new products because sometimes not everything is um, exactly lining up with what it should be. Some products that use exfoliants are way too high in pH to be effective. Same thing with vitamin C serum, certain, certain things I use encapsulation, the vitamin or the uh, pH can be different and then you got to do more evaluation so but in general most of the products i test when i do a review are what the ph should be not always but most of the time so but it is beneficial if you're buying expensive brands uh to be able to see if your skin's gonna be actually able to use what you're buying you know if you're buying the uh oh, what's that brand biologic recharge they're a really expensive p50 uh lotion uh, and you're spending a hundred bucks on it, you want to make sure the pH is proper that you're going to get the expected results. Otherwise, if the pH is way askew, you're not going to get what you paid for specifically. So um, anyway, so those are some of the basics of pH for dummies. Uh, yeah, so curious what questions you guys have. And I can also talk about this more in a live stream if you're interested. Uh, just let me know and leave a comment below. So uh, thanks so much and I will see you more tomorrow. Okay, bye guys.